informative. So welcome to team time. It is uh, Monday night. It is November 13th. We are rocking and rolling about halfway through the month. Um, and continuing to share some things that we learned um, from the Advanced Leadership Conference, things that really resonated with us that we think will make a difference um, in, in helping um, each of us grow as individuals and um, as a community, and then therefore to help more people. So that's why that's why we come here on Monday nights. But there are, I'm seeing some good stuff in the chat too. So thank you for sharing. There are some cool things happening this week alone. So um, just wanted to go over them briefly so that we're all on the same page. All of this has been posted in Coaches Out for Change, but just want to share real quick a couple of key things. Um, the first one being that we have um, tomorrow night just learned about this. David Bush is doing um, Explore the Benefits of Health Coaching. It is tomorrow night. It is at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So that's a real good time. Not too late. Um, he's got four or three incredible stories there. This is a huge opportunity to invite. Um using the transformational school skills that we've been talking about the past few weeks um, in terms of talking to our clients, talking to people in our worlds, uncovering those needs, et cetera. And um, so like example, Emily, who I spoke to on Thursday, who was talking about the pictures and whatever, I, she's a busy full-time working mom. We just talked about what would that look like? What would that feel like if she could offer this kind of freedom to somebody else? And she was like, I don't know, like I might take a look at it someday. I don't know if now is the right time, um, but I just reached out to her before this call and I was like, hey, it's happening. Would you like me to send you the link? And she said, yes, I'll take a listen. So um, the challenge for us is to invite, we'd like to invite, invite three people three people in your world um, just to, to sit in tomorrow night. Um, there is another one the following Tuesday night that Valentine organization is doing one, but these are our opportunities so that you can help individuals see it bigger than you. And then on Thursday night, um, Jim Quick is his name. He um, is an author, famous, uh, he's, he's um, famous for the broken brain, but a brain coach that this is going to be like a, public service. You can offer this to anybody, to clients, to coaches, to people in your world. Um, but he is very renowned. Lori Cole just told me that she listened to one of his podcasts, was super inspired by him and um, just limitless expansion um, is what he is all about. So um, encourage you to participate in this. This is Thursday night at eight. And then the last thing you guys is um, that there. I did post about this. Um, there is a virtual summit happening on, um, I guess I don't have that image right now, um, happening on December 2nd called the Big Summit. This happens every year in December and um, it is for coaches, but you can invite clients, people that you want, may want to learn what we're doing um, from 11 to three on that um, Saturday and it is free. There is no charge for this one. So um, all of us hopefully can be on. And um, so I'm looking at the questions in the chat. So, um, but we will, um, I'll share more about that. Several of you guys have already registered, but these are just things. The holidays are coming. The calendar is going to fill up quick. So just don't want anybody to miss anything good out there. Hi, right, Meg. All right. Well, hey guys, one of the things that's probably made the biggest impact in my life personally and uh, professionally has been the work with Jim Dethmer and the 15 Commitments of Conscious Leadership. And one of the things that we did over the Advanced Leadership Retreat is we talked a lot about the drama triangle. And so tonight we are going to talk a little bit about the drama triangle. And then we've got some really fun, a uh, little bit silly role plays for you. And uh, so we're going to show you what this might look like in your world. So, uh, but first we wanted to show you a video so that everybody's on the same page um, as we do. If you see anything that's uh, pops at you or whatever, pop it in the chat for us. Uh, but let's jump in and watch this video together. Are you working from presence or the drama triangle? Brought to you by the Conscious Leadership Group. Find them on the web at www.conscious.is. Conscious leaders know the difference between working from presence and working from the drama triangle. Presence is above the line and drama is below the line. Most leaders and most organizations spend most of their time in the drama triangle. Drama is characterized by blame, 
wanting to be right, toxic fear, and adrenaline. Like good dramas at the movies, all drama has characters that play certain roles. The drama triangle has a hero, a villain, and a victim. The job of the hero is to seek temporary relief. The keyword is temporary. The hero is the one who gives a hungry person a fish sandwich, rather than teaching them how to fish. The hero doesn't want others or themselves to feel bad, so they say and do things that make the immediate pain go away, without facing and dealing with the core issue. When I'm exhausted from overworking, I hero myself by eating and drinking mindlessly, or surfing the web, or exercising. When another feels sad, I hero them by saying things like "It'll be okay" or "I'll do it for you." The hero seeks value by being needed by others. The second role on the drama triangle is the villain. The villain's job is to blame. I can blame myself, others, or blame the group. When I blame myself, I say things like "I shouldn't have eaten that donut," or "I should work harder," or "I messed up that presentation." When we blame others, we say. It's your fault we didn't get that project done, or you didn't give your best effort. When we blame a group, we say they messed it up for all of us, or they just don't get it. The final role on the triangle is the role of victim. The victim is at the effect of life is happening to them. For the victim, a person, circumstance, or condition is doing something or not doing something that is causing the victim's life to be as it is. I can be at the effect of anything, including my boss, my kids, the weather, my job, the traffic, the economy, my body, and my mood. When I'm in victim, I'm feeling powerless. Every role in the drama triangle is a form of victim consciousness, and in the end, everyone is trying to prove that they are the biggest victim. When people and teams work in presence, the roles change. The victim moves from victim to being the creator. They take responsibility for their lives. And stop complaining about what is happening to them. The villain becomes the challenger. Challenges bring healthy pressure to the creator to support them in facing and dealing with their lives in a way that creates a breakthrough. Unlike the villain, they don't blame or criticize. In presence, the hero becomes the coach. The coach doesn't try to fix anyone. They see everyone as fully empowered creators of their own lives and seek to support them in taking responsibility for creating the life they most want. Leaders and teams that learn to play in the creator, coach, or challenger roles of presence find they are more creative, engaged, aligned, and energized. They have more fun and get more things done. So, are you working from presence or the drama triangle? All right. Man. <laughs> All right, YouTube wanted to play another video for us today, but I'm just curious, um, and I'm gonna check out the chat. But did you see yourself in any of those places in the drama triangle? Um, if you would, maybe put it in the chat. I know I certainly see myself in the drama triangle, and it and it happens to all of us, right? There's this idea of being above the line or below the line, right? And and. If we think about the line, being below the line would be being in the drama triangle, being the hero, being the victim, being the villain. And if we're above the line, we are operating as a coach. There's there's different terminology for it, but it's basically when you're in control and you're not playing into the drama. That's when we're above the line. So this is lingo you're gonna hear a lot uh, as we continue to work together. So just wanted to make sure everybody knew about it, but also wanted to give y'all some real life examples of what this looks like. So um, I'm just wondering, do we have any victims out there that could help us out? Woo. We do. All right. So I'm going to spotlight Corey. Corey's going to play the victim. And um, we're, we're going to have some fun with this. So this is going, we're going to pretend like we are doing a coach mentorship call. And so if you hear anything that sounds victim-y, if you'll just pop it in the chat or, or talk about it, we want this to be interactive. All right. Hey, Corey, how's hey. it going? How are you doing today? Oh, it's it's okay. Oops. That didn't. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I can hear. Going okay. So that's that that tells me something. So tell me more about what's going on. Oh, just I've been so frustrated lately. I you know I 
try to talk to my clients and they just keep pushing me off. They're not answering my calls. They, um, they're not answering my texts. They uh, keep pushing their orders back. Um, you know, they're just kind of like, oh, the holidays are coming up. I'll just get back on plan in January. And, you know, I try to keep texting them and I just figure, you know, it's just, I'm annoying them. I just should probably just leave them alone. Mm, man. So it sounds like you got a lot of emotion around that and kind of things that are going on right now. I'm just curious, Corey, what is your greatest fear through all of this? Well, I'm, you know, right now I'm feeling really frustrated with, with all of those clients. Um, but I think, um, maybe I'm just feeling a little defeated right now. And, um, and I just, you know, I, I don't want my business to go down. So that's kind of scary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that with me. And, um, I'm just curious, I know we've been talking a lot about facts and stories, is there any chance that any of these things that you, that you're talking about that are frustrating you, any chance that they might be a story? I guess they, they could be a story that I'm playing. I, um, you know, I'm just, I think I'm, my confidence goes down when all these orders get pushed and I start feeling, I just get in my head and I feel bad and, um, it's a lot of insecurities, man. Yeah, I, I absolutely identify with that. It's one of the reasons why I'm so glad that we are having this mentorship call. Uh, and I'm also wondering, Corey, is ha thinking about all of these frustrations and these fears, is it pulling you farther away from where you want to be or is it putting you closer to where you want to be? Oh, it's pulling me farther away for mm -hmm. sure. So what is it that you want to create? Well, I, you know, I really want to get my clients back on track. I want, I want to help them and support them. Um, and I just, you know, I want to feel, I want to feel secure in what I'm doing and feel good about what I'm doing. Um, so I've just mm -hmm. been feeling kind of bad lately. Yeah. What is it that you could do? Like, what are three actions that you could take this week to help you create those things that you want? Um, well, I could, I guess I could, you know, continue to text and call my clients. Um, whenever I talk to them, it seems like that gets them back on track. We talk through issues. Um, so I could do that. I could maybe have some more patience with myself and with my clients. Um, and just, continue to just do the work and, um, do the thing, you know, do some more postings and, and try to, um, just do what I know is right for my business. Man. I love that. What do you say you work on those things and then let's touch base in a couple of days and see how things are going and how you're feeling. Yeah. I think that sounds like a good plan. Well, awesome. Well, Corey, I loved time with you today. Thank you so much for uh, for sharing and for all that you opened up to with me um, today. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Sounds good. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> all right. So that was Corey being the victim. And so notice she was, she, the world was happening to her. Her clients didn't want to answer. Um, people were pushing orders. All of these things were happening to her. So she was being the victim happened to me today, right? It's very normal for us to kind of go into that victim mindset. But we, the best thing we can do is catch ourselves or have a, a friend or a mentor catch us and switch from victim to creator. So what can you create? Because we know the more we focus on what's wrong, it the, the worse it gets and the worse we feel. So um, hope that served and hope that um, illustration was helpful. All right, I'm wondering, do we have any villains out there? Woo, D Corchin. All right. Um, will you, yeah, can you pop off mute and um, share with us um, if you've got your little sign for being the villain. There we go. <laughs> My handwritten sign, villain. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how much time you have, but I have been doing everything, Meg. 
I'm doing everything. Like I am providing challenges for the coaches. I am keeping, you know, making separate Facebook groups, making sure we have reading guides. I am holding team meetings. I am holding Zoom calls. And it's like, it's like nobody wants to do anything. Like the energy is so low. It's it's like I'm doing like like I've done this 12 years. I know how to do this, right? I don't understand why people are struggling. I I don't. And then don't get me started with corporate. Like seriously, with corporate, like they just those the way they made those cruise guidelines, it's so hard. It's so hard. Like, I don't know how to, I'm going to get on the ship. How am I going to help people get on the ship? And they took away the select fuelings. Do you remember that? And like, I have a client, she won't do program now because they don't have those gluten-free bars anymore. Like they just took it away. Just gone, just gone. And my clients, God, you want to talk about Corey, you know, like my clients, it's like, they won't answer the phone. I mean, I call them, I provide things for them and I'm just... I'm just at my wits end because I am doing everything I'm supposed to be doing as a coach. And I don't feel like I'm getting the return Mm -hmm. in exchange. Mm -hmm. Well, Dee, thank you so much for sharing that. It it feels like you got a lot of emotion around that. I can feel your emotion and I hear you. Um, Can I ask you a hard question? Would you rather be right or would you rather be responsible? Uh, mm -hmm. No, I, I would rather be responsible. I don't really feel like I was making myself sound right, though. No, I know it's it's a hard one, right? Um, because I agree. I mean, all of what you said was so good. Um, but I also know. I mean, you've got a huge team. You've got a lot of clients, and and I'm just wondering, do you think there's any chance that any of this frustration that you're feeling might be felt by by other people? What do you think you're the people that you love, like, what do you think they are experiencing right now? Well, you know, now that I sit here and think about it, probably the better thing to do would be to actually have some deeper conversations with coaches. Like, why are they frustrated? Or if they're not coming to team time, just asking the harder questions, maybe I don't want to hear the answers, but maybe really try to figure out what's going on and maybe challenge them too, in terms of what their goals are and, um, you know, and, and are their actions matching? So it's not really anything against me, but maybe that's just a struggle against themselves. Oh, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. I love, man, you're being so creative. You're thinking outside the box and you're stepping into the hard by being willing to have those conversations. I think you're going to hear some really great things from, from your people. So I'd love to stay plugged in and hear the things that that you're learning maybe in a couple of days. Sounds good. All right. So that was the villain, right? The world is happening to me. Um, or yeah. So yeah, to the challenger. Yeah. She moved from villain to challenger from below the line up into above the line. All right. So we have one more for you, for you guys, and it's the hero. It's going to be a hard one for a lot of us to identify with, I have a feeling. So I have worked with Meg for a, a long time. One of the first things I remember was Meg was going to make things and laminate them for all her clients. <laughs> and I remember saying, I'm not sure that's the best use of your time, but um, just curious, Meg, you've been coaching for a long time, but like, how are you feeling right now with everything? How's your business doing? It is hard. It is hard right now. I mean, I am telling you what I am working with, with clients. I'm doing everything I can think of. You know, I just talked to Karen. I spent 30 minutes on the phone with her, trying to help her update her order and figure out what to do with her, her card and her premiere. And, and, you know, I've been um, calling clients, making sure they're getting on the Monday night call, making sure they have the link every week and then following up with them. And, um, I have a lot of clients, they're struggling with recipes. So I've been spending time customizing the recipes and like, I'll, I'll reconvert them, just trying to make it so easy for them. I'm like, man, doing everything I can to make it easy for my clients to be successful. I just, I want them to be successful. And, you know, my, my coaches, man, I'm doing everything I know how to do. I mean, I've been, man, I've been tagging my coaches in all of the posts that I see. I've been um, encouraging them to watch the training. I've even offered to re-watch the training live on Zoom with them just to help. 
Um, I got some of them going out of town. I'm coaching their clients so they can go on vacation. I'm just, man, dude, I'm, I'm getting so tired. Well, you were definitely killing it. <laughs> That's for sure. You are killing it. Um, and you know what? The one thing I've always loved about you, Meg, is your heart. Like I can feel it that you want to take care of other people, that you want to make that help them be successful, et cetera. But I guess the question I would ask is, is this helping like, like Karen and the people you've created recipes for, can you like measure that and say like, wow, I did that. And man, they're just flying with their results now. Is it helping them move forward? You know, I don't think, I mean, it helps me feel better about, about things, but I don't think it's actually helping them. And what about your coaches? You know, all the spending time with them and being on trainings over like, is, are their businesses growing? Are you feeling the growth and the a surge in energy in your business? No, you know, when I think about it, I'm, I'm not really empowering them to be responsible for their own business. I'm just kind of doing it for them. What would it look like if you did empower them? Huh. So like, how could I empower them? I could go back to their whys and find out what they want and why it matters to them and, and help them create a plan to figure out what trainings they want to get on and, and what they want to do when they go on vacation and make it not need to depend on me for all of it. Yeah. I feel a lot better. Is there a fear of letting that go? Like, what do, do you have an underlying fear that makes you feel like you have to do these things for them? Like what, what would happen potentially if you don't? Yeah. I mean, I think that's a, that's a fear for me. Like, you know, part of helping people so much is my worth, right? It makes me feel worthy and makes me, you know, feel like I'm making a difference, but I guess if I'm thinking about it and I'm not actually empowering them, then really, am I making a difference? And so um, the fear is if I don't do it, that they won't. But again, that's not really empowering them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a great example, everyone, like of Meg coming from doing everything. And there's a fear if we don't do it for them, right? Of our own self-worth or they might go away. They might not be successful. So we're just trying to kind of resuscitate and keep them going. Um, but are we really doing our job as a coach? So moving to that role of empowering them is the role is the true role of a coach with it. Absolutely. So, I mean, this is really, you know, I think we've talked about it a little bit about um, it's about what we learned at the conference and they just kept using the word taking 100% responsibility. So, you know, for me as a, you know, if I'm playing a villain, you know, and a lot of that stuff I made was made up, but like, I've got to look at it and say, okay, what's my role in this? What evaluate it, ask the harder questions, et cetera. So whether it's, you know, your own personal health journey, whether it's your business, um, impact coaching, your clients, coaching, your coaches, I think the first thing is, is just always remembering, like, am I taking 100% responsibility? Um, and we were thinking about this as we're kind of approaching the end of the year. We start with Thanksgiving next week, right? We're already starting into this holiday season. Um, so how do we, what we want to do is like give some tips around that. And one of the things that we always talk about is lead with your own health, lead with your own health, right? And we're all like, yeah, yeah, I know, but I'm not, right? Or I'm not doing it. And, and I get it. And I know that people are struggling, but some of the words that really resonated with me from um, the leadership conference was they were talking about being a professional health and business coach. And with our own personal health, it said every day, your personal standards determine whether you are claiming to be a professional health coach or a professional business coach. So like what standards are you personally holding yourself accountable to? Because at the end of the day, like the buck starts, stops here, right? And um, upward mobility, when you take care of yourself, like it, how you show up is going to be how you are received. Um, and if you're looking for that trajectory of your business starting to go up, better response from your clients, um, better response from your coaches, it really does start with the personal responsibility of just leading ourselves well. And so my advice would really be like set a goal for yourself. If there's a habit you want to change, set that goal, um, work with your coach. Just realize like we all are. I mean, I'm doing it too. Like I've got some things that have creeped in, um, but work with your coach and really um, take, you know, take that 100% responsibility for yourself. And how do you want to show up during this holiday season for your own personal health? 
That's such a good reminder, Dee, and something I'm working on right now too. Uh, the other thing I think it's important to think about is how do you want to support your clients during the holidays? Because uh, here we are, uh, Thanksgiving is next week. And so this is the most important time to coach your clients well. So even though this is the time that you might want to kind of lean out, this is the time we really need to lean in. And I've got a question for you. Do you want your clients to be successful? And if you do, put a me in the chat if you want your clients to be successful. And do you want your clients to have double the results of most people? And if the answer to that is yes, we know that we got to get on the phone with our clients. We need to support them. And we also know they're human, right? So they may not want to uh, reach out in this season, but that doesn't mean that our efforts and our calls and our texts don't make a huge impact on them. So, um, and I think it's good for all of us to remember they paid $400 for you to be their coach, for me to be their coach, for us to show up for them, even when it's hard. And uh, so just want to really encourage you to show up, to lean in, to ask hard questions. And I had a client call today and I had to ask her, hey, do you want me to be your friend right now? Or do you want me to, to be a little bit harder on you? And she wanted me to be hard on her. And that's not really my natural state, but I think people need it right now. They need us to ask those harder questions. So highly recommend reach out to your clients, find out what their game plan is for the holidays um, you know, have them text you after the holiday to, to see how it went. That is great. Um, plug them in to all of the different resources that we have. And uh, we have a great new resource. And um, Lauren, I'd love for you to share it with us if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so those of you who were on last Thursday night, we had a client call and actually just got a text even right now uh, with how much that was appreciated. And so uh, we're going to be doing that the second Thursday of every month at eight o'clock Eastern time. So the next time will be um, December 14th and oh goodness, that's my mom's birthday. I might need help with that one. Um, so anyway, but we have gotten such great feedback. And so really, really important though for you guys to be spreading the word with your clients, for you guys to be on and you guys to be spreading the word with your clients. Um, we keep hearing feedback, you know, that it's so helpful to have that more intimate time and really just that connection and that community. Um, and so, and we do have the link that's posted on the eat, live and be healthy page. Um, that's a YouTube link. So something I'm going to be doing this week is sending that out to all of my clients and letting them know, Hey, this is going to be such a great, if you've missed it live, definitely watch this. It's just 30 minutes. You can listen to it on your commute, um, or, you know, however, but that it's going to have such great tips for you on navigating this week and just encouragement during the holidays. Um, so anyway, it's been really fun and we'll keep continue doing that. Um, but we'd love to just really keep that momentum going and spreading the word. Thank you, Lauren. Um, yeah, I can't wait to watch it. I haven't watched it yet, but I've heard great things. So to help your clients, uh, navigate through the holidays, highly recommend you send them that link. You let them know that that's a resource for them and it's going to keep going. So, uh, D, do you have anything else for us? Um, not really. No, thank you for that. And I love that being able to use these tools. Just want you guys to know we've updated the link trees. So, um, like if you're looking for past episodes of the team time calls, that has all been updated as well as we're putting those communicate community calls, yeah, not the Monday night calls, but that they can, cause they can go to the, um, podcast for that, but ours, we're now updating them in the, uh, in the uh, Optavia 411 link tree. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for you to get it on your fingertips. And that was a great reminder, um, Lauren, that like, what a great tool to send to your clients this week, right? The one that was about gratitude and help. So um, the next few weeks, guys, it's going to get busy. You're going to get busy with your family, with the holidays, et cetera. The more you prioritize yourself, your business, show up here in community, um, invite the coaches on your team to be here. What we're doing now is building momentum, building that consistency, 
consistency, that connection that is going to flow us into the new year. So um, just so glad you invested in yourself tonight. Thank you, Corey, um, for your role playing with us and, um, and all the good things that everybody is doing in this group. So we'll see you again on Monday and, night. Meg. Yes. And we want, we have a double dog dare for everybody tonight. And that is to think of three people that you want to invite to the Explore Health Coaching Call tomorrow night. David Bush is putting it on. David Bush always does a stellar job with those calls. So think of your three people. And when you do, if you'll comment on the recording of this call and let us know, we want to celebrate you and um, can't wait to hear how it goes. So that's all I got. Yeah, Changing lives. All right. Good stuff, guys. Bye-bye.